People always ask me, hey, what photo editing software is good for beginners? Or how do I get better results with my photo editing? Today, I'm gonna to show you one of the craziest pieces of software that I've come across that will allow you to up your photo editing game in just a few clicks. Whether you're new to photo editing or you're a bit more experienced, you'll know that it takes a while for you to really master the software develop your workflow and learn new techniques. And while this software that I'm using today is geared more towards beginners or photo enthusiasts, it's packed with tons of features that would take hours to learn in Photoshop and it's converted them into super simple sliders, which makes it easy to get great results. Luminar Neo reached out to me to try their software and I was a little bit skeptical at first because I've been doing this for years and I'm stuck in my ways. But when I heard AI technology, I was intrigued. I've been playing around with it for a while now and there's so much in here. I just want to show you a few of my favorite features that really stood out to me, so let's jump in. So I've loaded in a few images here and I'm going to go ahead and edit this first one. Now Luminar is suggesting some presets that I could use. They've selected some specifically for this photo, but then there's also some down here that I can use and purchase. I don't want to use any of those right now, I'm just going to do my own thing. I'm going to come over to edit and the first thing I want to do is sort of make a few general adjustments to the exposure of the image and maybe add a little bit of contrast to something like that. So over here on the right, I've got all my tools um, that I can use and I'm going to go into develop, which is sort of your exposure, you know, general sort of photo editing settings. Now this looks familiar to me because I've used other photo editing software in the past and I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to drop the exposure a tiny bit because I feel like it's a bit overexposed. And then I might come into the curves and just add a little bit more contrast. So I'm going to do a very simple sort of S type curve, which is gonna add a bit more depth to the shadows, bring up the highlights a little bit. Okay, nice. So you can see here, before and after of what I've done to the image, I've just given it a little bit more contrast um, overall. Now this looks pretty good to me so far, but as it's a portrait, I want to really focus on the face and make sure that the face really stands out and, and pops out and things like that. So I'm gonna zoom in here a little bit and just so I can get a better look of what's going on. And I wanna go down to portrait and I'm gonna to go to face. So this is called face AI and within here you can make some adjustments to the face. So what Luminar Neo has done is it's analyzed the photo, it's found her face and I can adjust her face using the sliders in here. So the first one is face light, which is basically just going to add a little bit more light to the face. Whenever I take a portrait of someone, I like to make sure that their face really stands out. And sometimes I do that in post by sort of drawing a mask and maybe lifting the exposure on their face a little bit. Within Luminar, I don't have to draw any mask because it already knows where her face is. And so when I just drag this slider, it's giving me those adjustments to just her face and not to the whole image. So I'm gonna lift that face light a little bit. If I dragged it all the way, you can see it gets really bright, but that's way too much for me. Her face is already quite well lit, mainly on the side by the window, but this other side is in shadow a little bit. So I just want to even out a little bit and add a bit more light. And you can see before and after what that has done for me. So now I'm gonna come down to this other tab called eyes under face. And here we can make some adjustments to her eyes. Again, Luminar already knows where her eyes are using the artificial intelligence technology. So if I adjust these sliders, it's just gonna make those adjustments to her eyes and nothing else. So the first thing I wanna do is go to Eye Enhancer. And you can see if I take this all the way, it's really gonna increase the catch lights in the eyes and just make the eyes a bit brighter. You can see the adjustment here that it's making in the eye. I don't want it that much because I want it quite subtle, but as you can see, if you push these sliders all the way, you can go quite extreme. So I'm gonna lift that slightly, maybe around 30. And I also wanna come up to Iris Flare and turn that up a little bit. And what Iris Flare is gonna do is it's gonna create a little bit of light. You might just be able to see it in here in the bottom half of the eye. If I push it all the way to 100, you can see that this bit's gotten quite bright here. If I do a before and after, it just adds a bit of highlight to the bottom half of the eye. I'm gonna bring that down as well to around 35. So we have some other settings in here as well, like eye whitening, which you could use if the eyes were maybe a bit yellow or red, but her eyes are, are quite bright and white already. If I push that up, it's gonna look very extreme. So I don't really wanna do that. We also have red eye removal, 
dark circles removal and improve eyebrows which is just going to darken up the eyebrows slightly but I don't really want to add any of those right now. You can actually go all the way and completely change the eye colour as well which is quite fun so I could you know make the eyes green or blue. There's so many different options here I could give her owl eyes which is a bit creepy but I'm just going to leave the eyes as the original colour for now. There's also some adjustments you can make to the mouth so you could um, saturate the colour of the lips for example or add some more redness to the lips, give it more of like a rosy sort of colour, lip darkening and also teeth whitening. So now I'm going to come down to skin AI and what we want to do with this is just to even out her skin tone a little bit and remove some of the texture. So if we zoom in here so we can really see it, I'm going to just lift this slider up all the way. And you can see it's like really smoothed out her skin a bit too much. It looks a little bit too soft, it looks kind of blurry. If we just bring that down to like maybe 25 or we go a little bit higher, you can now see how it's just sort of evened out the skin tone a little bit, removed some of the texture on the face. It hasn't completely removed, you know, all the spots. It's just evened it out to give it a softer, more natural look. And then there's also a slider called shine removal. So she's got very like dewy skin right now, which is quite nice. Um, I'm sure it was intentional. There's quite a strong highlight on the nose and on this side of the face and on the chin. So I can just use that shine removal to just tone it down slightly, but not get rid of it completely. And you can see the before and after of what those two settings did just there. And here's a quick before and after, as you can see. Now that was so easy, it literally took me a few seconds to do. So I'm happy with this and it didn't take me long at all. It wasn't super in-depth and like really detailed, but it gave me a nice clean touch up to the photo and made it pop a little bit more as well. So now I'm gonna move on to another photo from the same shoot and I'm gonna make a few adjustments to that one as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and select this photo here. So this is another photo from the same shoot and we shot this mainly using natural light from the windows. She is quite far away from the window, so it's, we're on the other side of the room. So I've had to push the ISO up to 640, which isn't the highest ISO, but at that level, you will start to see a little bit of noise forming in the photos. And if I zoom in here into some of the darker areas, I can see that it is a little bit noisy and I want to tone that down. And fortunately, there's a feature within Luminar to do that. It's called Noiseless and it's one of their extensions. And what it's basically going to do is going to analyze the photo and then get rid of the noise. So I'm going to click on Noiseless here and I'm going to go to, it says advice, use the low adjustment for this image. So it already analyzed it, it can tell how much noise there is and it's telling me to use the low adjustment rather than the middle or high adjustment. So I'm going to click on low here and it's just going to do this little sort of animation which looks quite cool actually while it works its magic. Okay and we're done. So it's analyzed the noise and it's done a really good job of getting rid of that some of that noise and just cleaning up the image. As I said it wasn't the noisiest image but it was bothering me a little bit so I'm glad that I could clean that up using that feature. So one of the things I'm noticing with this image is that she kind of blends in and doesn't really stand out from the background and that's because of the lighting. There's not enough light on her. The background is too light compared to her so she doesn't really stand out. I want her to sort of pop out of the image a little bit more. And there's a way I can do that. And there's a feature here called Relight AI, which basically analyzes the photo and it can tell what's closer to the camera and what's further away from the camera. And you can adjust the brightness of those individually. It, it analyzes the depth of the image and you can adjust the brightness near and the brightness far. So what I want to do is I want to turn down the brightness far first of all. That should reduce the brightness of all of this going on in the background and hopefully make her pop out a bit more in the foreground. So I'm going to reduce that brightness far. And as you can see, the background is getting darker, but she is staying the same. It's basically masked out this whole back section. Now, if I wanted to do this in another program, it would actually take me quite a while because I'd have to draw, paint in this whole section. And especially going around her hair and things like that, it could be really fiddly. But it's just done it with a slider. So I can just drag this up and down. I don't want it all the way down, but I want it a bit darker so I'm going to go around like minus 60 and then to brighten her up in the foreground I'm going to take the brightness near and I'm going to push this up a little bit as well and if I just click on this little eyeball here you can see the before and after of that it's so drastic like it's made such a big difference in making her pop out the frame and literally all I did was just adjust two sliders it's crazy I've got another image here and we kind of want to do the same thing. I want her to stand out a bit more from the background. Now I shot this at f2.8, but I also shot it quite wide, around 35 millimeters. So you can see that the background 
is still quite sharp like it is blurry it is out of focus but it could be a little bit more out of focus to sort of pull her out of the background a little bit more and I can actually do that in post-production using Luminar Neo. I'm gonna come down to Portrait and Portrait Bokeh AI. Click on here and then I just need to drag this slider up. What it's gonna do is that the artificial intelligence is going to analyze the image, recognize her as the subject, and then blur the background behind her. So as you can see, before and after, it has really blurred that background. But if I push it all the way, it can get really blurry but then it looks a little bit artificial. I can sort of come around maybe 25 and that's just giving it like a subtle blur. If I come over from tools to my edits panel, you can see all the edits that I've applied to this image. And if I just click on this eyeball here next to Portrait Bokeh, you can see the before and the after and the difference that it has made in adding that bokeh to the background of this as well. Now this next feature blew my mind. It's called Sky AI. And basically what it does is it analyzes the photo, selects the sky, and then you can now replace the sky in your image with a completely different image of the sky. And then it adjusts your picture to make it look more natural and basically relights your image to suit the sky that you've chosen. It's crazy. Let me just show you how it works. So I've got this photo here, which I took in Scotland on a trip. The sky is gray and cloudy, but there's not much going on here. It's just like a a typical grey cloudy sky but it's a bit boring to me I think we can replace this and make it a bit more dramatic so I'm gonna come over to sky AI I'm gonna click on this and I'm gonna go to sky selection and in here I've got a load of different skies to choose from I've got blue skies I've got cloudy skies I've got galaxies I've got sunsets there's a good selection in here and I can also get more online as well. I'm gonna go for a dramatic sky because the landscape is quite dramatic and I want a dramatic sky to match. So I'm gonna go for, I think, this one. Let's go for this one. So I just clicked on this. Wait a few seconds. Bam, the sky is a completely different sky. You can see that the image has become a lot more dramatic. It's got a lot more character to it. But also, when I do the before and after, you'll notice that it's actually relit some of the rest of the image to match the sky. So because this sky is very cloudy and it's got a lot of you know, darkness, but there's sunlight streaming through, it's added this darkness around, you know, on the land around here, but added some light around this area so that it really looks like the sun is coming through those clouds. It's absolutely crazy the way it, it just analyzes your image and relights it. That's just wild to me. Let's do another one. Okay, one more. This one we're gonna to take to the max. I'm gonna see how quickly I can make these edits and show you everything I'm doing. We're gonna change the sky. We're gonna to touch up the face. We're gonna add a little bit of atmosphere. We're going to really take this photo to the max and see how quickly we can change it around. We're gonna start with the sky and we're gonna go for sky selection. I want a dramatic sky. And I'm gonna go for, I think this one, I like this one. Sky number three. Great, okay, cool. So it looks a little bit weird, so we're just gonna it up a little bit um, we're also going to defocus it a lot because it just looks completely fake um, we're probably going to warm it up a little bit as well fantastic i'm happy with that actually i'm going to make it a little bit brighter a little bit brighter nice then i want to maybe add some atmosphere to this so i'm going to go ahead and put some fog in here again this is using ai as well just to make it feel a bit a bit misty, we're in the mountains. I want it to have that sort of feeling to it. Next, I want to actually add some sun rays. So I'm going to click on sun rays and I'm going to go place sun center. And I'm going to put the sun obviously in the sky, like where the sun roughly is. And then we're just going to turn this up. Maybe less penetration, nice. Maybe reduce the length of the rays. And then finally, I just want to go and do like just retouch the skin a little bit. Just We're gonna go to face AI and we're gonna just whiten the teeth a little bit. Let's do a before and after. Before, after. And that took me what, like three minutes? Come on now. So as you can see, Luminar Neo is absolutely packed with features and the artificial intelligence really takes things to the next level in terms of editing. This has completely blown my mind and I'm really excited to see where this goes as I think it opens up a whole possibility for photographers and content creators, especially those working at a beginner to intermediate level. I've got a download link to Luminar in the description and make sure you use my code to save 10% off your annual subscription. I'm gonna keep playing with this. I'll see you guys in the next video.
拜。